Hello, I'm Nigel Griffiths, I work in IBM Power Systems Advanced Technology Support in Europe. This is part two of a series on the hardware management console using the classical GUI. This one is about controlling your servers. Hi, this time we'll be looking at the machines in our computer room, our servers, and we have a list of them here as we've clicked on the server panel here. Um, and you see a lot of these are powered off. We actually had uh, testing of an uninterruptible power supply in our computer room over the weekend and uh, they wanted us to switch them off in case it actually failed and it did. But um, So let's, let's practice now a little bit. We're going to power these boxes on. These are my uh, five power six machines at the top. They're tiny little machines, four CPUs and uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM. I think my uh, laptop here has got more oomph than that. But uh, they're nice because they're all exactly the same. I run them as a little cluster using uh, PowerVC. But anyway, I've clicked on this item in here um, and you see these little buttons popped up in here. We can click on here and do operations power on. We get a pop up in here. We can um, Harbor Discovery is just used if you've got a problem with the boot sequence and things. Can't see I use that normally, so we're just doing OK. We'll see here over a reference code. In the good old days, back in sort of Power 3, uh, we used to have LEDs on the front of the machine, and they go through their codes as they boot it up to tell you what's going on. You can see it's just changed. Yeah, that's no good in a lights-off um, HMC-controlled uh, computer room, so that they're actually put on the screen in here. Um, if I uh, deselect that one and select another one, we could do it a different way. We've still got the button here. I could go to Tasks and Operations and Power On. That's another way of doing it. You have to decide which works best uh, for you. And so that one should be up and away in a second. Oh, I just noticed we've got a, a warning here. Um, something is uh, amiss. We'll look at uh, Part 3 or Part 4 looking at these uh, service events and how to uh, dive in and have a look. Um, let's start uh, the next one up here. This is orange. Down here we've got a little uh, arrow. If I click on here, we get another little panel in here. And if I click on operations, we'll see power on down here as well. So um, you'll have to decide what is uh, most useful for you. Um, I don't like this one because it's taking up a lot of real estate. Um, so I tend to pop that one out of the way. The task or the little button is quite good. If this has been slid over so you can't see the button on the end, then and task is always available up in here. Okay, so these are initializing. Um, we can see here available processing units. Well, these machines are off, so none of the CPUs or memory is available. Um, down in here, um, machines that are at operating status, we've got some very odd numbers. So these are the unused uh, processing units, CPUs, and um, memory gigabytes. And um, but we, then you're thinking, well, hang on, how big is this box and how do we control these sorts of things? Well, um, as we'll find out later on, um, some of these units in here, these are for the logical partitions and these ones are for the, the servers. Um, if I open up, for example, Ruby that's got some LPARs running, you can see here it has the CPUs and memory used by the LPAR. And up in here, this is the free resources on the machine. But what's um, actually... Um, on the machine, uh, it's configuration size. Well, we can control all that with this uh, little button here. Here are all the list of, I'll scroll down slightly, of uh, the things that we can uh, uh, see on our screen. And uh, look, configured processing units. This is the, actually inside the machine. We've got a serial number and model type. Uh, these usually come out as the uh, server names initially. If you don't want to rename them, they'll still be there. And a whole load of more other things down in here that we may um, actually want to have a look at. We also, um, here's the available that we have on our screen at the moment here. And um, if we select one of these, um, and we can move it up the list. So we'll have configured then available, nope, too far. Configured memory. In there. And then uh, scroll down to find my OK button. And now we've got the extra columns in here. The ones that are running, so you can see my Ruby has 32 CPUs and 512 gigabytes of memory. Uh, the bulk of that memory is actually still unused. Um, my LPARs are, are quite small on this machine. Um, and I haven't started some of the bigger ones. We'll see this one's gone to operating state, and we can see also that these things aren't quite fitting on the screen uh, very well. 
and um, we can click this button here we don't usually use that well I don't so we can pop that out the way as well it gives us some more real estate and we, we can move these things around if we can't see what's going on although sometimes it has uh, a mind of its own okay come back up to the top so we can see the details on here we can use a lot of buttons up in here um, open them all up or close them all down those sorts of things and um, we can filter so we can actually just look at uh, for example, uh, what's our P8 machines? And uh, take a whole lot of things um, out of the way. can get a bit confusing because you think, hang on, what happened to all my other machines? But um, we can delete that and get them back. Okay, particularly useful though if you're looking for um, a particular logical partition. You know its name and there's lists of hundreds of them in here. You can actually just say, go find it. Right then, if we go down to uh, Ruby machine again, and we'll scroll up slightly. Here we find I've got two VO servers that are running and two not running. This is for beta testing new versions, these two in here. Um, these are LPARs that are actually um, running. And some of these have got problems in here. I can click on these sorts of things and find out where it is. Uh, this has failed to boot, so we'll have a look at this. And it says waiting for virtual terminal to be open on the HMC. It hasn't failed. I need to go off and do something. I thought it was trying to do a network boot and, and not finding uh, the uh, server to talk to. On this one here, um, it's running but got stuck doing something other. The firmware did not find any operating system image. Oh dear, my disk is missing. Well, we a bit crash and burn in here, so that happens sometimes on our computers. Over here, we can find the uh, operating system version in here. Um, if we're running um, Linux, sometimes that doesn't say much um, over here. Um, here's the um, serial number and the um, model type uh, numbers. This is what the, the hardware guys keep talking about. They won't tell you that um, your Ruby machine's got a problem. They'll say your 21D494V uh, reported an issue and you'll have to go and find it. In here you can see the VO server, 224, that's the latest version. Probably got a uh, service pack as well on the back of this. Okay, now I've crushed this down into 1200 pixels, so this is why we're struggling to see all of the screen um, all the time at the moment. And you may want to close down some of these um, columns in here. Uh, these are help per user, so I can have a different set to my colleague uh, Gareth, um, have it the way that I like it when I come in. Go yeah, back up to the, the top in here. Bronze, uh, that's operating, so let's have a look at the LPARS running. Okay, it's automatically started the VIO server. I can set that uh, a request for my virtual machines. Um, and if I look at my gold in here, it didn't do that. The machine is running. Nope, Telefib, the VIO server is running. I was looking down one line, here we go, the orange machine is here. It says it's gone to standby mode. It started the machine but not started on the, any of the LPARs. I like starting my VO servers by default, but that one's not set. So it's just waiting for me, the standby is saying, well the box is up but you have to do something if you want to get a workload running. Typically you can start your VO servers um, and your virtual machines at the same time. The virtual machines, if they haven't got their own adapters, they're working from the VO server, they'll stop during the boot process until the VO server comes up, but then they continue on using their virtual disk to boot them. Okay, let's shrink those um, turnbuckles now. Select a machine, let's try a nice big machine here, my Power 8. And in the, the tasks, look at the things we can see about its machine. Properties. Okay, so we have um, general in here, this is details about the machine, there's not a service partition, so it won't be upgrading the system firmware via the operating system in here. We have an option here that if you shut down all your old piles, do you want to actually then go ahead and shut down the machine? That can be useful sometimes, can be a pain in the neck sometimes. Here's the processor details. So we've got 32 CPUs installed, uh, 19 and a half are assigned, we've got 12 and a half uh, left over. And um, it's using multiple shared processor pools. Oh, sorry, supported. May not be using them at the moment. So we look at the memory, 512 gig, and uh, a little bit in reserve, that's the hypervisor, 13 gig, and the scientific partitions, 128 gig.
on the I.O. side. A bit more details in here, and notice the slide panel down here, there's a few more hidden. These are all the adapters in the back of the machine. These code numbers can tell you which part of the machine it's in, and the, the C number is a, um, a genuine PCI slot on the back of the machine, and a T number is like an internal resource. So, for example, we have some USB um, memory key slots, as I tend to call them. Um, they're actually stuck on the back of the machine, part of the machine. Uh, the other ones are, these are genuine slots in the back of the machine. An R number is a resource inside the machine that you may or may not have, so you can buy the machine with or without uh, RAID controllers. Across in here, some internal information and things, and we don't use um, IO pools. I think that's an IBM I feature, but you can see which particular virtual machine is uh, using which resource in here. So. Typically, these are nearly always owned by the uh, one or the other of the, the virtual I.O. servers because we're mostly shared. We have an example here, though, of a VM96. This has got a RAID controller. That's because it's using SSDs that are connected to the RAID controller to do a bit of ARX 7.2 SSD caching of its fiber channel disks. Um, in here as well, We've got some that are owned by the hypervisor. These are using SRIOV, so the hypervisor owns them, and then um, we can allocate virtual resources on that adapter. You can obviously see some uh, empty slots in here that uh, we know we can put extra adapters in. I'm not sure if there's anything else in here that's particularly exciting. There's a mixture of uh, fiber channel and uh, gigabit Ethernet adapters in my box. Here it's telling us how many. Um, logical partition migrations you can do at uh, any one time and we've got nine running at the moment we've got some uh, power on parameters i forget what these actually are i don't tend to fiddle in here so we'll move on capabilities is much more interesting these are some of the features some of these you have to purchase and, and some of them will be true at particular versions of uh, the hardware so um, partition mobility capable that's lpm for example uh, further down here, I just created a movie on simplified remote restart capable. So this machine is a Power 8 machine and it has this feature enabled, which means it has Power VM Enterprise Edition. In advanced, we have things in here which tends to be uh, being used by the uh, things like the high performance guys, uh, huge memory, maybe a bit of Oracle databases is using that. Uh, memory mirroring in the top end boxes so that... Um, we can survive uh, large problems with uh, our memory and the trusted platform tends to be used with the power sc people for security okay so they're the features that we have for a particular server if we go back to our, our tasks we have operations where well, we powered on we can do a power off we got uh, manage the led status and we could switch off for example this uh, warning led here um, Best to go and check what the problem actually is before you just go switching them off to make the machine look tidy. That's about all we have down in here. We have some um, performance data that we can capture via the HMC. Again, I guess that would be a different movie, lots of information in there. Here's how we create a partition. We'll come back to that in part three. Um, and our virtual resources for uh, sharing things out from the VO servers. When we first uh, bring up a machine, and uh, connect it, well, connect it to the private HMC LAN, um, and then power it in by putting it onto the power supply. Um, then we'll find a machine that comes up here as unknown, and we have to click on it and say log in, and we need to use the special username and password to log into the service processor. Uh, then it appears here, and we can control it as normal. This is what the uh, connections are about. We can reset those or disconnect it if we're moving a machine to a different HMC. We have some things that we can set at the uh, machine level, like the SRIOV mappings, for example. Updates are about uh, updating the uh, service. We tend to use... I tend to use that down in here. We can pick up the same uh, task in here. We'll come to that... Later on, service ability, service management events, we'll look at that again later, maybe in part four. Um, capacity upgrade on demand, if you bought a machine that, uh, particularly our enterprise machines, and 
you've got hardware in the machine but you haven't paid to activate it then you go into this part in here and, and put in this capacity on demand uh, the hypervisor will then um, activate the CPUs or memory and then you can immediately assign that to logical partitions later on and finally the HMC now collects quite a lot of performance data and um, you can go and look at some graphs and the, what's busy on the particular machine yes that would be in another movie here in that one it's quite a big topic but not sort of part of the basic operation well that's it for part two look out for part three controlling your virtual machines if you've liked this video please click on the like button below